Okay, uh, hello. I want to do a uh, review of the Orion uh, 127 millimeter uh, Maxitoff Cassegrain telescope. Um, when I first bought this telescope for the first couple months, I was a little unsure if it was really what I wanted. Uh, I wasn't really pleased with it. And I'll tell you what was going on. What, what was happening was when I was taking it out, I was getting a lot of times blurriness. Uh, it was fogging up, and that was giving me some frustration. And when I was looking at things like nebulas as opposed to my reflectors, it was not giving me uh, nearly as much detail uh, on nebulas. So I was like even considering returning it. So, you know, after a time went by and I learned some more and I read some more about it and I tried some new things, now it's become my favorite telescope, and I have a lot of different telescopes. So, basically, what you have to do in order for this to make this telescope work well, first of all, is you have to uh, set it outside for several hours to let it get acclimated to the temperature, okay? Because it uh, it really needs that acclimation time. It's a very slow uh, cooling telescope, so you got to give it several hours. And most importantly, okay, to deal with the dew problem fogging up on you, okay, you need. Okay, so what, what you need to solve the dew problems is you need a dew cover. So I made this, uh, you know, you can see it's kind of ghetto. Okay, I just got it from Michael's, a fabric store. You can see uh, uh, what it's made out of there. Uh, this was like, what, a dollar fifty or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I fit it perfectly. So you can, you can make this look neater and stuff. I just use packing tape to seal it up. Um, but by using this, okay, by it just slips right on the top there, it makes a huge difference. You don't get that fogging up. You don't get the dew problems. It makes a huge, huge difference. And once I started doing that, the I really started enjoying the telescope a lot. Okay, what is this telescope good at? Well, it gives very, very clear images. When you're doing star clusters, uh, okay, whether they be globulars or other types, very crystal clear uh, images. And so I really, really like that. I think that's something you'll really like about it. Now, nebulas, again, you're not going to get those uh, in great detail. They're lighter when you look at them as opposed to the reflectors I have. Now, to take care of that, what you need to do is get yourself a nebula filter, a good quality nebula filter. Okay, like I have this. This is a UHC filter, a decent one. And you could also consider an uh, oxygen filter at 03. Those will really help you on your nebula view. Uh, galaxies, it does pretty good. It's pretty similar to uh, the reflectors I have as far as uh, detail in galaxies. It's it's not bad at all, but where it really shines is on uh, double, triple star systems and star clusters. It really does an amazing job on those kinds of things, okay, because the image is so clear. There's just no blurriness at all. It's crystal clear, and that's what I really like about it. So this one's mounted on a uh, Star Seeker and the Star Seeker is really nice. I mean you can have it mounted on you know any type of mount as far as that goes you're going to get that type of a performance. Um, I often, what's really useful, this usually comes with a 26 millimeter and you really do want to upgrade. If you want to get the most out of it, you need to upgrade the eyepieces. I got this uh, Celestron 32 millimeter Okay, Plossel, and 32 millimeters is about perfect, okay, as far as finding things. It gives really nice images, and 32 millimeter gives you 48X. So that's what I'm using to find stuff usually, okay? I usually, when I'm uh, doing my two-star alignment on it, I use a 25 millimeter Plossel for the two-star alignment. And what I've found often, after I do that, when I'm using at least the Star Seeker 4, I can use this uh, Celestron, Okay, uh, Luminos is 15 millimeter right here. Again, a good quality eyepiece. And I'm able to just keep it on 15 looking for stars. I may be able to actually find things on the computerized version. Now, that may not be as easy if you have it manually using. I would stick to the 32 to find things. But using this, I can just keep it on this and get some amazing views. This, this 15 millimeters is at 103x. 
And I was able to do that when I went to Big Cypress uh, last winter and had clear skies, very, hardly any light pollution. I just kept it on the 15 most of the time as I was searching for things and putting things in the computer. And I was able to get it. I didn't have to adjust it. It might be on the edge of the view, but it was there. And the views were just simply amazing uh, in a dark sky area like that. Um, if I wanted to get a little more power, then I would use this 11 millimeter. Okay, this is a 11 millimeter, another 82 degree. Okay, this is Explore Scientific. And that got me, you know, close to views. That gives you about 140x. Now, my other one I normally would use with this uh, is, a, is a 7 uh, millimeter, which would give you a 220x, getting close to the limits. But you really got to have excellent conditions for that. I mean, usually in most sky conditions, the 11 millimeter is about the best image I'm going to get, or the 15. So, you know, it's, you're not going to be using, okay, the 7 millimeter that often. You just got to have really perfect conditions for that. As far as planets, uh, really good. It compares very favorably to using a good quality reflector, refractor as far as the images, the clarity, again, because the clarity is really important on this. Um, I would say that my 10-inch uh, uh, reflector gives me slightly better views. I would say of Jupiter and Saturn, slightly better than this. But, you know, that's a 10-inch scope. This is a 5-inch scope. And um, let's see, what else did I want to talk about? Uh, as far as the views of the moon, they're simply eye-popping, unbelievable uh, images of the moon. Um, you know, well, you can get really good images of the moon, a lot of telescopes, but this is pretty amazing, uh, the images of the moon that you'll get. So one of the great advantages of this scope is that it's only eight, about eight and a half pounds, so it's very portable, great all-around scope where you can travel with it, doesn't take up a lot of space, and uh, I think that's something really, really nice about it, that why... You know, it's a, it's a really good scope. Now, the, you know, one disadvantage, this is a pretty expensive scope. It's just $349 for this telescope only, okay, which comes with an eyepiece and your Easy Finder 2. But if you get a go-to system like this, it's $749 or $750. So it's on, it's on the high end, okay, as far as intermediate scopes. But you are getting really good quality. So just to review, what it's good at, great at, is star clusters of all types, uh, galaxies it's fairly good at, planets and the moon it's excellent at, um, nebulas it's not great at, I would say it's less, uh, less clear images of nebula than a good reflector, but if you use your filters, then you can get nearly as good an image as a reflector if you do that. So all in all, okay, I do highly recommend this uh, scope. It's got a lot of advantages to it. Uh, the, the images are just really clear, and I think most people would really like that uh, the images clearly, because compared to my reflectors, uh, there's definite quality difference in the clarity of the stars, uh, pinpoint stars that you're seeing. So if you're interested in this uh, telescope or others like it, I'll put a link in the description box below where you can check the current prices because prices do vary, they do fluctuate. So you can check the Amazon links below for this scope and some other uh, of the things I mentioned and other accessories that you may be interested in. All right, so hopefully this helps. If you do have any questions, uh, let me know.